What's going on, Cheese Kingdom? Welcome into today's show. Before we get started, I want you to hit that subscribe button because we are closing in on 53,000 subscribers and we have off season coverage that you're not going to find anywhere else on YouTube. We've got reports, we've got rumors, we've got news, we've got signings, we've got draft coverage. All you want and more right here on the Chief Support. So lock us in, hit that subscribe button because we are just above 500 away from 53,000. Let's get this show on the road here on the Chief Support. You saw it, you looked at it, you didn't believe it, you still clicked on it, you hear it, we appreciate you. Austin Eckler, could he be the Kansas City Chiefs next running back? We're talking about that on today's show. We appreciate you hanging out with us. I'm your host, Jason Andrews. And honestly, this is a report that I did not expect to see when I woke up this morning, but yet here we are. And well, I got direct quotes, man. Let's start going on here. This is from ESPN film analyst Matt Bowen talking about Austin Eckler potentially making a move to go to Kansas City. Saying, with Clyde edwards Lair and Jarek McKinnon heading to free agency, the Chiefs could sign Eckler on a short-term deal to work in rotation with Isaiah Pacheco. He would give Coach Andy Reid a pass game threat out of a 21 personnel with the ability to flex from the backfield. Eckler caught 51 passes last season with the Chargers and has 440 receptions in his career. Resigning with the Chargers or joining the Raiders would also be good fits. Now, I know you clicked on this and you thought, okay, well, that's the report. What else am I staying for? Well, here, we're going to tell you why this could work and why Austin Eckler actually might be a solid choice for the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're also going to tell you why this would be stupid and potentially maybe somebody else that you could pivot from and say, I don't want Eckler, but I do want a different Los Angeles Chargers. So make sure you stick around for that. Let's start, though, with why this could work and ultimately why Eckler makes sense in Kansas City. And honestly, Matt Bowen kind of beat me to it and said exactly what we needed here. The running back room could be thin. You have two free agents on there with Jarek McKinnon and Clyde edwards Lair. Now, do I think they'll resign these guys? Kinda, I'm kind of in the middle. I don't really know at this point. There's a lot of things that have yet to really been cleared up, obviously with the offseason. There's a lot of time where you're not talking to these guys anymore. You don't see them in media availabilities. And so you have to wait and kind of get your times to say, okay, well, are we gonna sign back CH? Are we gonna sign back Jerk in it? What's happening with Chris Jones? What's happening with Jerry Steed? We don't get to talk to him about him. Eckler, when we kind of talk about him in this scenario, well, what would he bring to the Kansas City Chiefs squad? Well, first of all, he's a solid running back. Listen, he is very proficient in the receiving game as well, and so I think that really fits with Pop. Not that I think that Pacheco is not a good receiving back. He proved this year he has that facet in his career if needed, but I would like him to more be that ground and pound guy and let him just run the rock instead of having to make him go out there on third down and try and catch it as well. He also has four years of over 1,000 yard all-purpose in his career, and he would be a cheap death piece, and ultimately there's a bunch, a bunch of upside with him, and he's not that expensive. I will say those are the positives about his game. There's also some cons. He's somewhat up there in age for a running back. 29 doesn't seem like a lot when you consider Jarek McKinnon's 31, but he just kind of lacks the speed that a lot of running backs have. His whole thing was agility. It was pushing through the line. It was running through tackles. Well, guess what? When you're getting up there, it's easy to see that agility has kind of gone down a little bit. He also only scored six times this past year after scoring 18 times in 2022. Now, his contract projection, I'm sure you're all sitting here going, Chase, well, all right, you've told me all this, but how much is he going to cost? Because we know we want to sign Chris Jones. We know we want to try and sign Logerius Snead. We've got a bunch of free agents we're looking at. We want to get wide receiver help as well. So are we really going to want to spend a ton of money on Austin Eckler? Well, maybe he's not going to be that much. You want to know what it is, though? Well, stay tuned here because I do have to tell you about one of our sponsors, Prize Picks. And I'm telling you, you're not going to find better daily fantasy sports than Prize Picks. They're the largest DFS platform in North America. And honestly, they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks also offers a root policy so that, say, some people get injured. Guess what? You can have them get rebooted for NBA games. And now, Prize Picks, guess what? They're the only daily fantasy sport platform with an injury insurance policy. Use that code prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS, you're going to get a first deposit match of up to $100. I'm sure you're sitting there saying, Jace, I haven't played Prize Picks since the NFL has ended. What should I do? Well, listen, I'm going to come out here and maybe be a little cocky, but I think my baseball knowledge is pretty good. I'm going to be quite honest with you. So... Here's a little four-man little prize pick season-long MLB total. 
I got Shohei Otani, 38 and a half home runs. I'm going the more on that. I know it seems like a lot, but this dude just signed a massive contract. He's going to be playing the Rockies a bunch in Coors Field, so uh, I'm thinking he's going to get a lot of home runs there. Juan Soto signed that with the got traded rather to the Yankees, so I think he'll probably probably hit 36, 37. And that's the more than I need. And then Bobby Witt Jr. KC guy signed the big contract, 169 and a half on his hits. I'm going the more on that. And then Adolis Garcia, 32 and a half home runs. Going the more on that as well after his World Series victory. You can put in these exact same picks and really just tail me the entire way and make your money. Because I'm telling you, testing my skills on prize picks this season has been awesome. And a few of the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Once again, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and the normal selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one Daily Fantasy Sports app. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's Daily Fantasy Sports made easy. All right, there's the contract. One year, $4 million is what he is projected to get, or around that area, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Um, obviously, can't be exact. Don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, how the market value will kind of go with running backs this year. So now that you know kind of the positives of a game, the cons of his game, and ultimately the contract that he would cost, would you sign him? I think that's the question we have to ask now. Would you sign Austin Eckler in 2024? This is the question that I'm going to pin to today's show. This is the question that honestly is the stimming thing of this entire report. So let me know in the comment section if you would sign Austin Eckler in 2024 to pair him as the backup to Isaiah Pacheco. Type S for sign, type P for pass. Go down there, get it in the comments section because I'm very curious to see what all of you think. It wouldn't be the first time, though, that Kansas City got a charger. And uh, if you know where I'm going with this, uh, you're a chief support legend. So obviously... Last year, Chiefs actually signed a Charger off their team. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, he seemed to have a pretty big role in, uh, in the Super Bowl game. You know that guy? That'd be Drew Tranquil. That'd be Drew Tranquil. This guy was a Charger uh, in 2022. Actually played with him his first four years of his career. Signed with the Chiefs after he got a text from Andy Reid saying, see red and think Super Bowls. <laughs> uh, what a quote, by the way. And honestly, guess what? He got quotes from Andy Reid. Well, there is something that maybe Drew Tranquil could say to Austin Eckler. You know, the former teammates at the parade, Drew Tranquil, he said, and I quote, I'm not, this is what he said, this is way better than L.A., <laughs> which is awesome. I mean, he had a, there was a bunch of fantastic quotes from that parade. Uh, obviously, he talked about him saying, uh, Big Red, uh, T, T. Swift, and the boys came and got him. It's just kind of a, an all-timing quote, obviously, you know, it got it, it was ended by some horrible things, and uh, still prayers to everybody who was affected by that. But still, the, the, you you got to look at these quotes sometimes and just kind of think back to what a positive day that was. Besides that, it's just the unfortunate way to end it. But still, the fact that he's saying that is just kind of wild. All right, so we've gone through why this could work. Well, that leaves why this would be stupid. That's where we're at right now. And so let's kind of talk about that and why exactly I don't think this would be a good idea. And it's pretty obvious. Just re-sign McKinnon and CEH. I mean, I, that's, that's the ultimate answer here. Just re-sign them. Honestly, there's a chance you could do it for less than $4 million combined. I mean, let, you talk about Jarek McKinnon first. I think he's probably the more likely one to get re-signed because his 2023 contract was $1.1 million. I'd pay 1.2. Give him a, give an extra 100k. I mean that, that's fine with me. Go go 1.3 if you want. That's fine. But like, it's a pretty cheap deal. He likes the Chiefs. The Chiefs like him. He's had some pretty amazing moments. He talked about Super Bowl 57. Uh, slid down close to the goal line. Could have scored a touchdown. But a you know guy who scored a touchdown on a Super Bowl. But instead he took one for the team and became a Super Bowl champion. Now he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. So uh, obviously that would be nice. And then on top of which you talk about 1.1 million. Ceh is not going to cost you more than two million. Like, I think his projected market cost is 1.6. So, like, I think at max, like, make sure you keep him. It's probably $2 million. Maybe two and a half if, if like, you're feeling generous. Like, he's a first-round pick, but he's a first-round running back, and it wasn't exactly the greatest first-round running back I've ever seen. Isaiah Pacheco was a seventh-round pick. He's played better than Clyde edwards in his first two years that he's played in. So, I think that overall, if you get CEH for $2 million, you get Jerick McKinnon for $1.1 million. Uh, last time I did math, which was yesterday... That's uh, that's three point one. So uh, that's less than four million. That's that's what that's kind of my thing. Now, there's also also this. You have Pacheco. He's going to be your workhorse back. He's going to be the guy. 
I don't really want to pay $4 million for a backup. Like, quite honest with you, I don't think the Chiefs need it. I don't think that's the point of emphasis in this offseason. I don't think that they need to address that too much. Ultimately, I think you sign McKinnon. Ultimately, you may, you may be good with that. Like, you sign McKinnon, draft a running back. Dylan Johnson may be available in the later parts of the rounds. Uh, you can talk about uh, a couple of different guys in the later part. Jace McClellan, uh, Jace brother, by the way. Uh, anyway, but there's other places you need to look at. There is another charger, though, that maybe would fill those other places. Uh, obviously, what the Chiefs need, that would be a wide receiver. Well, somebody might get cut. That would be Mike Williams. Now, Mike, huh, he's been great. Obviously, there'd be some contract costs and all that stuff, but he could potentially be cut by the Los Angeles Chargers. It's unfortunate for him because the ACL tear kind of really bounced him out of here, and that's why that he is a, a cut candidate, just because he got that big contract, and now the Chargers are in cap hell, so they need to find ways to reduce cap, and guess what? Michael Williams would be a big one. Now, PFF uh, kind of labeled him as the cut candidate for the Chargers, saying, the Chargers have a strong case as the NFL team in the worst financial situation heading into the offseason. So, several tough decisions await. An unfortunate ACL tear could push them to move on from wideout Mike Evans, a former top 10 pick, as he's one of four players with a 2024 cap hit north of $30 million, none of whom are quarterback Justin Herbert. Obviously, that you cut him, there'd be money involved. Chiefs would have to figure all that out and kind of be a lot. But still, I ask you the question, would you like the Chiefs to sign Williams if he was cut by the Chargers? Would that be an interesting topic to explore? Would you think that, hey, I mean, if we could work it out money-wise and get him into the Kansas City Red, I'd take that. So let me know in the comment section of this video. Type Y for yes if you think that you would like to see Mike Williams and see that possibility or type in for no if you're already like, ah, I'm good. I don't want to worry about any of the money. Just, just forget about it right now. I don't want to see him in the Chiefs. So I'd rather draft somebody and sign, say, T. Higgins or somebody like that. His career stats, though, speak for themselves. Almost 4, 000, or actually almost 5,000 yards, excuse me, over 300 receptions in less than 100 games, 15.6 average, 31 touchdowns. Uh, this guy played well. Unfortunately, he had the injury bug strike multiple times. Honestly, throughout his career, was just really injury-ridden, but still, whenever he's on the field, he's a force to be reckoned with. Obviously, he had Keenan Allen in there as well, so maybe that helped to his production, but... At the same time, you put Mike Williams and Rasheed Rice together, what's to say it's not the same combo? So we'll have to see. Obviously, there's a lot of things to happen before. Then he would have to get cut. The money would have to work out. There'd be a lot of stuff that the Chiefs would kind of need to take into account before signing Mike Williams. But it's a thought. He might be available. May as well put it on here. So we appreciate that. Uh, make sure that you're subscribed, obviously, if the Chiefs make a move, if they sign off Snickler, they sign Mike Williams, if they go sign T. Higgins, if they make a, a trade, whatever. Guess what? We'll have you covered. We'll re-sign Drew Tranquil, we'll re-sign uh, Chris Jones, Lajarius Sneed, franchise tag them. We'll be right here covering for you basically immediately. Hit that subscribe button today, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Uh, as always, Chiefs Kingdom, you're legends, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Peace out.